watching Fox 17 News at 10. First on Fox tonight, the dog days of summer living up to their name yes. and really putting our air conditioners to the test. And it looks like the hot temperatures will not be leaving anytime soon. So let's check in with Fox 17 meteorologist Arch Kennedy for the latest. Arch. Uh, guys, this is a serious matter, really is over the next several days. So we're not, to, to, we're talking temperatures in the triple digits. Heat index values definitely going over 100. Uh, you can see where our heat advisory is in effect as we go through Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday heat index values will be 100 to 105. Uh, basically, as you get around oh, Lebanon area, Murfreesboro, westward through Nashville, all the way back to Dixon, Clarksville, for instance, that heat advisory in effect, you're faring better over toward Cookville and Crossville area. If you look at the current temperatures, this gives you an idea of how hot it really is. We're still this last hour, nine o'clock hour at 91 degrees in Nashville, 86 up toward Clarksville this past hour, 90 degree reading up at Gallatin, 89 nine Murfreesboro. Well, we hit 99 today, and as you see, our normal high for this time of the year would be 89. So we're some 10 degrees above where we should be. Last day that we hit 100 was July 19th of last year. We're going to probably get there in the next uh, couple of days. I'm going to tell you when you'll see triple digits and then when we'll get some relief from all of this heat. All that coming up for you in just a bit. Okay, Arch, thanks. Well, with temperatures near 100 degrees, many of us are turning thermostats down and enjoying the cool air conditioning. But with everyone cooling down at once, can the Nashville area's power grid handle the load? That's a great question. And Fox 17's Flint Adam is live in West End with more. Flint? And Laura, there isn't even much relief brought on by nighttime. As Arch just told us, the temperature in Nashville still 91 degrees and still muggy. So you can better believe it. There's still going to be uh, plenty of air conditioning units all over the area that remain on tonight. But the Nashville Electric Service, they say it, it's all going to be okay. There's no need to worry, at least not yet. They say the power grid is running just fine with no major interruptions. Now, this time last year, NES saw just over 2,600 megawatts of usage. That was an all-time high. This year, so far, the peak has been just under 2,500. That may change this week, though. We do anticipate with three-digit temperatures coming up for the following days in this week that we probably will surpass our peak, but still our system should be ready to handle it and we anticipate no problems. And Turner says it would take several days in a row of excessive heat for the power grid to become taxed. Laura. Uh, Flint, we're on day 12 of temperatures above 90 degrees, so I want to know what the record is for triple digit heat. All right, well, hopefully that's not a record we're going to be breaking any time this year, but you'd have to go back to 1952. That's when Nashville set the record for consecutive days with temperatures over 100 degrees. That record was eight. Can you believe it? Reporting uh, live, Flint Adam, Fox 17 News. I do not like the sound of that at all. Flint Adam, live along West End. Thanks, Flint. Students in Robertson County, Middle Tennessee, may be feeling the heat of cramped conditions when they head back to school tomorrow. A population boom in Robertson County putting the aging school system under stress. And Fox 17's Erica Curry here with uh, that story. What a problem to have. It really is. And you know, Robertson County uh, has this high school, Springfield High School, which is one of many that has actually outgrown its high school. And in addition to reading, arithmetic, and writing, there is, of course, a fourth R in Robertson County, and that is remodeling. Construction is a common sight in Robertson County. From homes to schools, new frames are going up everywhere. Renovations on many schools have been on the back burner for years, but that is no longer an option. We're using our lecture hall for a classroom. At times, we're using the cafeteria and the library as classrooms. And so we're just really tight on space. Springfield High School was built for no more than 800 students, but there have been more than 1,000 here for the past five years. To be able to do that and still have school, what we've had to do is basically, just like I said, stack teachers on top of teachers. Every classroom ha may have at least two and sometimes even three different teachers rotating in and out through that classroom. Between portable classrooms and construction, the pinch is even tighter, making even more obstacles for the students. Some of the biggest concerns Springfield High School students face are where to park and how to get into the building. 
But Springfield students will not be the only ones facing a challenge. Several other schools throughout the county are also packed with portables and a lack of certain amenities. We visited many of our schools this morning and uh, we're, we're finding air conditioners working in most all places, but we know that's going to be a challenge, especially when uh, those bodies start coming in tomorrow. And administrators expect a record number of students this year. Robertson County students go for a half day tomorrow, then are off on Wednesday for a teacher administration day. Now the first full day is Thursday. And no relief in sight for any of us. <laughs> Certainly not. All right, thank you, Erica. <laughs> Laura? A metro schools are getting mixed grades from the state's for no child left behind standards. This year, the number of schools meeting those benchmarks rose by 10. The bad news is the district itself has failed to make adequate yearly progress for the fourth year and is now on what's called corrective action. That means the state could take a greater role in making improvements. Despite the change, schools director Dr. Pedro Garcia says he believes the improvements the district has made is something parents should notice. Getting better. We have ways to go, but our district, because of our people and because of what they do, they just are making it happen. Among the biggest no child left behind gains for metro schools, elementary and middle school students have increased their reading proficiency by 3%. While officially renaming one of Nashville's streets after the mother of the civil rights movement, Governor Phil Bredesen publicly criticized the state's Judicial Selection Commission. Mr. Bredesen was presiding over a special ceremony to change the name of 8th Avenue and Metro Center Boulevard to Rosa L. Parks Boulevard today. Well. While honoring this courageous woman, Bredesen voiced his disappointment about the list of candidates given to him as possible appointments for a vacancy on Tennessee's Court of Appeals. It is a list that does not include any African Americans. I don't know how I can make it any clearer to them that having 12 members of our appeals court all white is not appropriate in the state of Tennessee. I'd like the chance to consider. Mr. Bredin said he would like the chance to evaluate some qualified minority candidates. The governor will appoint a successor to Justice William Koch, Jr., who was appointed to a seat on the state Supreme Court. Up next, Pac-Man Jones is no longer wrestling about what to do while he spends time away from the Titans. And also coming up tonight on Fox 17 News at 10, the search is on right now for several miners. Six of them trapped underground in Utah after their mine collapsed, causing an unusual side effect. And the space shuttle is set to lift off on Wednesday, and aboard will be somebody closely associated with the Challenger tragedy. From touchdowns to smackdowns, Pac-Man Jones is ready to rumble. I told her she gets all the good lines. <laughs> the cornerback has signed a contract to be a pro wrestler with Nashville-based TNA Wrestling. Now, Jones will take to the ring this Sunday night to wrestle in his very first match. The announcement made today that Pac-Man will be focusing on tag team wrestling. Promoters say that their business is built around conflict and controversy and that Pac-Man, well, is going to fit right in. Tonight, Jones is already in training. We've got a ring set up uh, on his property, and I've actually been in the ring with him, and we've got several TNA uh, stars out there. They're going to help train him, and uh, so he, he, he's training uh, to be a wrestler. The terms of Pac-Man's wrestling contract are not being released tonight, but TNA managers say his priority will still be returning to the football field. Making news in America tonight, six Utah miners are trapped underground right now and their condition is unknown. But they do have enough water and oxygen to last several days and it may take at least three days to get to them. Uh, the coal miners are about 1,500 feet below ground in Huntington. That's about 100 miles southeast of Salt Lake City. Early this morning, a 3.9 magnitude quake rocked the area where the miners are trapped. Investigators thought the quake caused the mine to collapse, but later determined it was the collapse that caused the quake. Space Shuttle Endeavor is set to lift off on Wednesday, and among the astronauts on board will be 55-year-old school teacher Barbara Morgan. Now, you might not know Morgan, but you will know the person that she is associated with. Morgan was the backup for Krista McAuliffe, the teacher who died on board Challenger in 1986 when it exploded. And Morgan is looking forward to her time in space. Some of my responsibilities are the shuttle arm and the station robotic arm. 
and uh, load master for all the transfer. Um, and on entry, I'll be sitting on the flight deck helping with our entry duties. And if time permits, Barbara Morgan, the school teacher, hopes to speak with children at several different schools while she's in space. Well, airline passengers face the worst delays in at least 13 years, and no one is predicting clear skies ahead. The Department of Transportation says nearly a quarter of all flights on the major carriers are late. Several things are to blame, including increased demand for travel, smaller jets that carry fewer people, and weather problems. The airline industry also blames the lack of a modern satellite-based air traffic control system for creating backlogs. Up next, how eating some fruits can help protect you from the sun. Then after that, Publix is now filling some of your prescriptions for free. Also coming up on Fox 17 News at 10, a new report says thousands of guns the U.S. gave to Iraq are now being aimed at American soldiers. Dangerous heat in the forecast this week. I'll tell you when you can expect triple digits, plus when we'll see some relief from the heat coming up. legislators make a shocking discovery. U.S. guns are being used to shoot at U.S. troops. The guns were originally given to Iraqi soldiers, but they've ended up in the hands of insurgents. Now, a new report says that the need for flexibility in the field has led to a lack of accountability. Fox's James Rosen tonight explains. The report examined records kept by Army General David Petraeus, the commander of all U.S. forces in Iraq, when he was in charge of Iraqi training back in 2004 and 2005, and compared his figures with property records maintained by the Iraqis. And the numbers didn't add up. About 110,000 AK-47 assault rifles couldn't be accounted for, along with 80,000 pistols. The gaps were even more pronounced for body armor and helmets. The most readily accessible black market for those uh, stolen weapons is in Iraq, and some of those are going to be by the insurgents. The main problem the GAO found was that the U.S.-led coalition in Iraq, also known as MNFI, or Multinational Force Iraq, had no central bookkeeping system to track the equipment it supplied to the Iraqis until December 2005, and did not make intensive efforts to collect property documents from the Iraqis until June 2006, and even those measures have proven inadequate. GAO's review of the January 2007 property book found continuing problems with missing and incomplete records, the report found, adding, MNFI does not currently have orders that comprehensively specify accountability procedures for equipment distributed to the Iraqi forces. The Pentagon did not challenge these findings, saying instead it would review its policies and procedures. The United States has spent about $3 billion on equipment for the Iraqis, and the Pentagon is presently asking for another $2 billion to help develop their security forces. At the Pentagon, James Rosen, Fox News. Public supermarket chain is making it easier tonight for you to get over an illness or an infection. They are now offering seven of the most common antibiotics for free. All you have to do is bring in your prescription and they will fill it at no cost. Now for a list of the antibiotics that are being offered for free right now, go to our website, fox17.com, click on Fox Links and then on Antibiotics. Well, Nashville's extreme heat is making a safety drill involving CSX trains a little bit more difficult. The railroad uh, brought one of its safety testing trains to town this week. They are practicing what to do if there was a hazardous materials accident. But our steamy weather changed their emergency drill. So anybody be any hazmat suits today? You know, probably not this week. It's uh, it, it, From a safety standpoint, it's a little bit too hot this week to be putting people uh, at that sort of risk. So. We'll, uh, we'll be spending a lot of our time inside of Union Station. CSX transports 500,000 carloads of hazardous materials across the U.S. every year. They say they have a 99.9% .9 safety record. Well, if you have to be out in the heat, grab some fruit before you leave home. That's right. Not only will it help keep you hydrated, it could provide some natural sun protection. Now, we all know that most sunscreens block some of the sun's harmful rays. Well, apparently fruit helps too. Studies show that eating cherries, apples, cocoa berries, and citrus fruits protect the skin from damaging free radicals caused by sun exposure. I've also read that watermelon, too, has some natural SPF 
ingredients, properties to it. I so. want to believe, especially when it gets hot like this, and particularly on Saturday and Sunday afternoons. Staying inside helps too. <laughs> with yeah, some I know that works. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's true.